Now, a phone line is being set up in Sweden to help women report their male colleagues for mansplaining. Well, so what is it? Well, in the words of the Oxford Dictionary, when a man explains something, usually in a condescending or patronising manner, a bit like what I'm doing now, but to a woman. The union behind the phone line says mansplaining is a growing problem in the modern workplace. So do women actually need protection or is this a sign of political correctness? going too far. Well, just joining me to discuss Peter Lloyd, the author of Stand By Your Manhood, a game changer for modern men, and the broadcaster Rosie Millard. Good to see you, Peter. Rosie, don't women really need to just toughen up? And if somebody is being patronising, say, sorry, you're being patronising, please stop. We don't need a helpline, do we? Well, I think mansplaining is a bit like manspreading, that other awful word. Except if you can imagine, rather than their legs being apart, it's, it's their kind of like can-do sensibility encroaching into women's areas. And this does happen. I mean, mostly it happens to me when I'm driving, when men who I don't even know stop and say, help me how, to get into a corner or to park my car. Or indeed, when I'm driving somewhere I know very well, my husband decides to tell me where to go. You know, go left, go right. When I'm driving but to my parents' house driver, and women are it's just as guilty of doing that as men. I do annoying. it all the time. I think I think it I think that it does undermine I think I think women can be undermined in the in the workplace, in the office, and I think if there's a helpline to, to allow them to vent a bit of steam or, or just to find out that there are other women who also feel anxious because their words aren't being taken as 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 authority, um, that they always need to defer to someone else. I think it's quite helpful to find that you're not alone in, in feeling deeply frustrated about it. There you go, P Peter Lord. It's helpful because women won't feel so alone. You're rolling your eyes. That's a very feminine <laughs> thing to do, if I can say so. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I can't help it. I mean, how patronising to women. Uh, you know, it, it, it's almost unbelievable. It's almost, uh, you know, ironic. Um, Although that said, I actually welcome this th this helpline because it is firm proof of how divisive and vindictive feminism has become. Now, if this came from e from any other nation, I would assume that oh, maybe the sisterhood has developed a long overdue sense of humour, and and this is all just a bit tongue in cheek. But of course, it just confirms that Sweden has absolutely lost the plot on the gender debate, and this should be a warning shot to every other country and everyone else in the world. Do not let the gender bullies dictate the narrative. It's embarrassing. There you go, Rosie. Well, Do you feel like a gender bully? No, I think, and I think also that Peter, it is, it is all very funny. But actually, if we're talking about a narrative, let's just have a look at the heads of state of the European Union. Let us see how many people there are actually female. Let us look at the heads of boards, of, of members of boards, of trustees on boards. There are so few in Britain that we now actually have a, a, a group, a, a device, to, an institution designed to get more women onto boards because it is so. You know, we have less female MPs than they do in Afghanistan. It really is, it, it, and he may laugh it off and say, oh, this is gender uh, balance gone mad. But actually, mate, it's not balanced in the first place. It's not balanced. Mate? And one of the reasons why Ooh, it's not balanced... Isn't that a, what, isn't that a sexy... Aren't you woman splaining no, by calling one me mate? I'm just going back to your balanced. previous point. It's because, uh, uh, it's because uh, women going feel undermined about, Going back, in the back to your point about the electorate, women are the largest electorate in the country. If they wanted the government to be full of female MPs, they could vote them in. There isn't a secret plan to keep women out. And moreover, we're talking here about a union that members subscribe and pay for to be members of. They should be representing all of their members equally. They shouldn't be having this gender bias and, and being rude and saying words like mansplaining. That's absolutely atrocious. I advise, if there are any, any Swedish men watching this programme, I advise them, cancel your membership to this union and hit them where it hurts. I mean, Rosie, isn't another point that, that you know, this is, if, if there are women out there who are so troubled by, by this kind of behaviour that they feel the need to, to take a helpline, you know, don't, don't they really need to look at, you know, as you say, the real gender imbalances in the world, perhaps the imbalances at the top of the FTSE 100 companies? There are places Indeed. where women need to be better represented. And surely anybody who wants yeah. to fight for female equality could perhaps direct their attentions and their energies a little more fruitfully than, than just yeah. worried about women They're, being talked down to a little I bit think, at work. I think there are more men 
men called John than there are women in the in the uh, is board members uh, in the FTSE 100. But I think that we have to look all around us, and I think that men wailing on about feminism gone mad and sexism and stuff just shows their anxiety. Yeah, men have had it. That men have men have had a, a, a had it purely in charge for a very very long time, and now they're actually having some sort of threat to their position, and they are squealing. And this is a great example of it. Peter Lord, is, isn't, isn't there some credence to the fact that this is a, is a subtle way of men trying to control the space in the room a little bit? You know, Rosie talked about man spreading. I mean, often in, in meetings, I've seen it, not literally, but uh, metaphorically willy-waving going on. Men trying to dominate the airspace, talking over women. And, and this, is, uh, this is the thin end of the wedge for a lot of women. They, they see this behaviour happening around them in the workplace and then they look at the bigger picture they look at how women are represented and they say this is this is fundamentally how it all starts well you know i think i think probably women do still face some issues in the workplace but i think they're putting two and two together and getting six and let's not forget there are much more serious issues that face men in the workplace that aren't being addressed i mean if you look at the rates of, of workplace fatalities in sweden Nine out of ten of them were male. Why is the union not addressing this and not some wacky esoteric theory about, you know, men sitting with their legs apart? P.S. because of their anatomy, that it's more comfortable to do that. You know, it, as some kind of oppressive force over women. The, the, we really need to get our priorities in order here. I'm not dismissing the concerns of women. I'm not saying that women sort of sometimes suffer hurdles in the workplace. But let's please... No, I'm not. But let's please get our priorities in order. I am... I am sick of, of having to listen to this, you know, back to front perspective on, on the real issues in the world. You know, it, we've just seen a presidential election run for, for two years, and not at one point did we hear any any of them, either of the candidates, address the various men's issues that that are promulgating the country and the world. Rosie, isn't this a way of women um, really encouraging women to be victims rather than encouraging them to stand up for themselves? Um, I, I understand that, but I, I don't think so because I, I don't know because I haven't been on the helpline and I haven't, uh, I don't know what sort of advice people are giving. But I think that actually, if it's advice to be more confident and to to, to operate better in the in the workspace and the workplace, then I think it's very valid. I am chair of a very big board. I'm chair of the Hull City of Culture and I've never chaired a board before. This is an enormous multi-million pound amazing event which is going to happen in Hull next year. And I was pretty nervous starting out chairing, being in charge of, of you know, a, quite a formidable group of trustees. And I went on a course run by the Institute of Directors, uh, a, a course for chairs. Um, and about half of the people on the course are women and half are men. But a lot of it was about how to, how to to, to, to how to run a board okay. effectively and how to chair it fairly and well. Um, and I think that if women, because women are underrepresented in this area, I think if women are given help, be it by uh, courses like okay. I did or by, or by helplines, it's a good thing. OK, I'm sorry to cut you off, but we have to end it there because we're running out of time. Uh, Rosie Millard, Peter Lloyd, thank you both very much. Great to talk to you both. Thank you. We will make America great again.